when when someone says personal brand like what does that mean to you what people think about you as the individual the entrepreneur separate from the business when you're not in the room everybody thinks personal branding is like a logo of a personal brand or all these different like influencers whether you know it or not you have a personal brand everybody has a personal brand Welcome to the Painter Growth Podcast, where we help you scale your painting company in record time. Join us as we explore sales, marketing, hiring, finances, leadership, and more, everything that you need to know to scale and grow your painting business. I hope you enjoy and subscribe. What is up, everybody? Michael Hickman here, founder of PainterGrowth.com, and you're listening to hopefully another episode of the Painter Growth Podcast. And with me today, I have uh, someone named Adam McChesney. What's up, man? He's the founder of Builders of Authority, and we're going to learn about personal branding today. I'm personally a fan of this. I mean, if you've seen my Instagram, I use Mike Gorickman everywhere. I don't use Painter Growth as my main handle. So I think personal branding is super important, and I'm super excited to hear Adam's take on it all. So what's up, man? Yeah, Mike, not a whole lot, man. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here, pour into the audience, and provide some value along the way. Yeah, that's what it's all about. You know, if, if listeners can come away with one or two actionable things that they can do to help propel their business forward, um, generate some more jobs, make some more money. That's what we're all about here. So um, let's just start with a quick uh, origin story, right? Give us like the 30 second, 60 second. How did you end up with a brand that's designed to help other people build their personal brands? Yeah, that's a great question. So I spent five years in medical device sales, did that up until 2020. Uh, but I got started in digital marketing in 2018. So I was in rank and rent digital marketing, basically as a as a digital landlord of sorts, I built 200 websites, and all the different service based industries from painting to contracting of all sorts and shapes and sizes to roofing auto glass landscape design, I'd rank them, and then I would flip the website or sell the leads. And then when the pandemic hit, I decided to go full time in it. But I, I, I basically created a traditional agency that most everybody obviously knows, doing all the website SEO, all that good stuff. And so from 2020 up until right now, I scaled an agency from zero to seven figures in 15 months and up to four and a half million a year, which is right where we're at right now, all through my personal brand. Like people knew, obviously, the agency where I was at, but more importantly, people knew and liked and trusted Adam McChesney. And so what I realized throughout that process is I had something that people were interested in buying from me. I just didn't want the shiny object syndrome because I already had multiple other companies. But finally, back in November, I launched Builders of Authority because people were like, hey, Adam, I want to learn this from you. So I work with a lot of marketers, but I also work with a lot of contractors and service-based businesses, as well as real estate investors and coaches and consultants, because we all have money sitting in our backyard which is our social media organic as you mentioned you post from the mic page not necessarily the brand page yeah so i mean just for a little quick credibility builder um because the guys you know and gals who listen to this want to you know see that you're in the trenches too you also own a, a landscaping company right now just tell me a little bit about that yeah so of those two uh, 100 sites that i had built starting back in 2018 two of those actually became companies so I own a landscape design company here in St. Louis called Visionscape, as well as an auto glass repair company that were actually not companies before I built those simple websites. I built those simple websites. I started driving traffic with SEO, and then they started generating so many leads that we just decided to create the companies on both ends. So you you basic, and I'm, I'm familiar with this model and it's kind of cool, but for those that like aren't as like kind of like what's that? So my understanding is you would build a website and, and like rank it with SEO, with just like a generic no name brand, it would bring in leads for say landscaping or painting or roofing or whatever. And you would, you would sell those leads to local contractors. And then eventually you would sell the whole website itself to somebody that's already like bringing in, let's so say you, you build this website up, it's bringing in leads organically, and then you sell that as an asset to somebody. That is, that is correct. That's one way of doing it or um, turning those assets into equity, which is a play I'm, I'm working heavily on right now. But the other aspect is literally just starting the company. So like yep. our auto glass company was <laughs> like the hard career. way to do it. <laughs> it's like the hard way to do it. But that's where the money. I mean, think about entrepreneurship just in general. Usually the hard way 
is a lot of times the way where most of the money is at. And that's what we found with like auto glass repair. Like we were generating three and 400 phone calls a month. I called every single company in town. I was like, Hey, I got this gem. I know you're going to think I'm crazy. And they all told me, including safe light that I was freaking crazy. And now we'll do over a million dollars in business with five trucks three years later. And everybody's like, man, Adam, I wish I would have, you know, taken that site off your hands. I'm like, of course, hindsight's 2020. Yeah, I think that like kind of speaks to the the value or the importance rather of knowing the business side of it, because like for for a lot of people, if they were just given 300 leads a month, um, they wouldn't do anything with it. Like they might they would just stay really busy or book themselves out or hire a couple of guys, but hit it quickly, hit a cap. Whereas you kind of approach mm. it from a business first perspective, you know, with scale in mind. So you probably built that infrastructure, realize that you can't be the operator and and kind of like systemize it with with team and systems from there. Well, all those companies, like at every point when I grew up, you know, four and a half million dollar agency, like I was a bottleneck at so many different points in the business. Well, the auto glass company and the landscape design company and a couple of the other like sister companies we have to those things, I haven't been involved in the day to day of those companies, which has been a good thing, but a bad thing, because the bad thing is I can't go out like not that I couldn't go out, but I don't replace auto glass, never have, never will. I don't know the first thing about the actual landscape design. That's why we have partners we bring into those companies and we do that. Because you bring in an operator with an equity stake. Exactly. Or if yeah. somebody like in our auto glass company, we brought in somebody with that wanted a bunch of money or that, that brought in a bunch of money to the company as well because we wanted to go from two to five trucks and buy a bunch of equipment and things like that. So most people fail because they don't have the leads but they then fail once they have the leads because they don't have the process and systems or they don't know how to be a CEO of a company. They tell themselves they have a company or a business and they really have just created a job for themselves. If you gave them five employees, even if they were the best employees, they would end up losing those employees and be like, nobody wants to work. I can't pay people enough money and all those things. Usually it's that the CEO or the business owner is truly just wanting to be a technician or a painter or whatever the industry is and not actually run a business. Mm -hmm. And I would even go one one further for the the people who have painters, but still feel like the business completely relies on them. It's mm -hmm. like the difference between hiring, you know, a bunch of helpers to just do a task and get a task yeah. done. Then if you're not there, they're not getting anything done versus like building a role and empowering people and letting them make decisions and and like really delegating responsibility. Like those are ver two very different things. Absolutely. But it looks the same. It looks the same. Well, you can fake it and make yeah. it look the same. It's like, oh, I got 10 employees. It's like, do you really? Yeah. <laughs> you got 10 people who work for you, but that doesn't mean that you have 10 employees. <laughs> yeah. So um, in this, I just I want to dig in a little bit more to this landscaping company because I think that's going to be most applicable. So you build this site, right? You build the site and you rank it on with SEO. However, people do that with magic and pixie dust. And then it starts bringing in, I don't know nothing about SEO, so don't want to even get, go into that. Um, but anyway, it goes to the top of Google in St. Louis, right? St. Louis, yep. Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So start getting leads um, from people looking for landscaping services. For a while, you're just like selling those to other contractors. And then you're like, hey, let's get this started. Right? Yeah. What, so, is, so what is the process from like that, from lots of leads to like, what was your vision for the business? And like, take me through that process. Yeah. So I was selling those leads on like a paper lead or a commission deal, like depending upon the size of the project that was coming in and who I was working with, because I had four websites that fed into the top of the funnel. They have so like a person a calling them, like qualifying and stuff. So there was all inbound. Okay. So basically people would come in a lot of times, like it would obviously like go to my phone or come into my email and then I would forward them to the right company once I, I knew that I could trust these people. And we had basically I would give them a taste of some leads because, of course, like everybody's used to like the home advisors and the Angie's list and the marketing companies that never end up panning out. I would just be like, hey, this lead's going to sit here. If I don't do anything with it, go take it and run it. And then they would close it and be like, Adam, I want more of that. So, OK, now let's have a conversation. Let's work out a deal. Mm -hmm. Well, I had. Exactly. Yeah. So provide value first and then figure out from there what, what makes sense. So I had a retaining wall website. I had a landscape design site. 
I had a Visionscape site because that was what we had like as deemed as kind of the parent company of what we wanted to do eventually. Um, and then I had a um, an outdoor living, like more of like a patio uh, outdoor living and kitchen type of a website too. So we had four websites that were at some searches on Google, like three of the four were ranking on the first page of Google. So people are calling three different companies and it ends up getting to like us at the same time and so we were just doing it really, really well. Well, at that same time, I had met a guy who had just moved to St. Louis, who he was working at another company that I consulted for. And he's like, man, I don't want to work for somebody else. I just sold my landscape design company down in Springfield, Missouri. I want to start another company here in St. Louis. And I was like, dude, this is going to sound freaking crazy. But I have these like simple websites that are generating some leads I think we can do something with it. And so that was in May of 2021 when we actually launched the company. But from the beginning, I had a partner once we went live versus in the Autoglass company. Like I launched that owning 100% and I've since had to like take, you know, pieces of the pie away from myself in order to bring the right people and run the company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so like is you with the landscaping company, um, you said mid 2021, now we're sitting start of 2024. So mm -hmm. what did you guys, what did you guys do for like top line revenue last year in the landscaping side? Yeah. So it was 750,000, uh, that we did, we did mostly design work. So my partner is really good at 3d landscape design. That's where we okay. get like a ton of our stuff. So less like so, rock moving. Yes, correct. So we don't do a lot of like we subcontract out. Obviously we don't have any in-house labor. We do a lot of that stuff, but we get a lot of work for larger design projects. And so we'll typically take on those things as we do them, but our profit margins are really good because we're doing a lot of design work, which is easy for him, easy mm -hmm. for us without carrying and figuring out why the concrete guys aren't showing up on time and then they're trying to steal the job from and us. Is the marketing have... just like 100% organic or do you do any paid yes. stuff as well? No paid stuff, 100% organic. Awesome. And did you leverage and for this, I guess we're going to like pivot a little bit here to personal branding, but like, did you leverage any personal branding with that? Or is it just purely like the brand of the company with good search engine optimization? So our best leads came from organic social media posting. And that was from like my partner's page. That was from our employees page. That's from our business page, of course, as well. The volume of the leads typically came from things like SEO because we're on the first page of Google for outdoor living or outdoor kitchens and 3D landscape design and some of those other things. But typically when the brand hasn't been built on the back end, and they find you organically on social media, they're usually getting, you know, three to five different bids and quotes, and they're trying to nickel and dime, and they're trying to do all those things where you have the brand authority built on the back end, right? It usually goes much better. Mm -hmm. And so we would find that it would be, we were closing at a higher clip when it was a social media organic lead versus what we were seeing from the typical digital marketing stuff. Okay. So let's, let's look at the personal brand then. Like bef before I kind of dive into it, like, what do you, when, when someone says personal brand, like, what does that mean to you? What people think about you as the individual, the entrepreneur separate from the business when you're not in the room, everybody thinks personal branding is like a logo of a personal brand or all these different like influencers, whether you know it or not, you have a personal brand. Everybody has a personal brand. Okay. Fair. Um, is that why is your company, your company isn't called Adam McChesney, but you just have the thing just out of like, since we're talking personal brand, you just use that. You took yeah. it one step further. <laughs> I did. Yeah. So like I have the Adam McChesney logo. So like when I go, so I'm going to speak at uh sales boost live in North Carolina, uh, as of this recording, like I'm flying out tomorrow, it'll be the Adam McChesney brand. So Adam McChesney is like the funnel at the very, very top just so happens to own multiple companies that do multiple mm -hmm. things. But people buy because they know, like, and trust Adam. The company or the service or the product is just the byproduct of Adam McChesney. Sure. Okay. Now, what would be the first, what, what are some of the, like, I guess the benefits of using a personal brand instead of just advertising through a company? So the, the basic thing, like if we're talking about like immediate results is it'll take 
about 90 days of consistency. So if you posted twice a day on Facebook, for example, on your personal Adam McChesney random guy page, it'll take about 90 days of consistency with doing some other stuff that we can dive into that would then take your business page about 12 to 18 months to actually like meet on the same level playing field. The reason being is because from a consumer standpoint, not everybody's just going and like liking anytime you invite them to your business page. But the other aspect is where do all those, you know, platforms make money from, from ads. So they are going to drive down your engagement on a side-by-side -side post. If you posted the exact same thing on your business page as you did on your personal Facebook page, by default, you have a much better chance of getting more traffic, more engagement, more results there because this is how they make their money. They want you to get discouraged and then boost a post, which you shouldn't do, and then run you know, paid ads in order to get the type of engagement that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you think it's like, do you think this works because people just would rather do business with people than with businesses and companies? 100%, especially in today's economy where people like any, I mean, you can literally go on any side of the imagination, right? A, a business, like my favorite example would be like brand new business owners coming to me as a digital marketer. Everybody would like be like, Hey, I hate digital marketing agencies. I've been screwed over by them. Okay. You just started your business last week. How did you get screwed over by a digital marketing agency? It's just the default, like building the defense mechanism, building a wall in front of it that they say no different from homeowners. If a homeowner is going to like spend a bunch of money on a project, the first thing that they feel like they should say is I've been scanned by contractors before. Well, if they know, like, and trust you and they realize that, hey, you are a individual that's a husband, that is a father, that is involved in the local community, that you know Susie down the street and your second cousin, like the whole gamut of that stuff, they typically don't come at you with all those freaking crazy rebuttals that most people will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what are some of the first things that someone should... So say we got, so you got a painter, say you're working with a painter and, um, they want to, they just want to bring, they just want to get some more leads, right? And they don't want to pay Facebook to, to bring in those leads. What are some of the first things that they should start doing in order to, you know, make moves towards building their personal brand? Post twice a day, every single day, at the same times I post at 7am and 5pm every single day, seven days a week. That's the post? first place to get started. What do I post? Yeah. So 80 to 90% has nothing to do with the actual widget that I'm selling or anything like that. For me, it's going to be different than what a painter should post, but I'll walk through my process and then I'll also walk through what a painter, for example, should post. Okay. But for me, my ideal client is an entrepreneur, whereas a painter's ideal client is ultimately going to be a homeowner that has su sufficient amount of money to pay for the project, et cetera, et cetera. So I post a lot of self-development, motivation, all the type of day in the life of the entrepreneur stuff because entrepreneurs realize that I am not just a marketer or a coach or an advertiser or whatever, that I'm a human being. And so that breaks down the wall and the barrier for me. So I post 80 to 90%, nothing to have to do with what it is that I sell. And then that the 10 to 20% that I do talk about personal branding, et cetera, I'm telling a story. I'm giving them tactical value driven information that they can go implement in their own business, but they see me not as like this spammy marketer, right? Mm -hmm. For a painter, I would have consistent themes to the day of the week, right? And tell stories with all of their different posts. But for example, Friday, five star Friday, highlight a recent five star review that you've gotten on Google or Facebook or a video testimonial and explain a little bit more about the actual project and why that person ended up doing business with you. You could do Transformation Tuesday before and after of a recent painting project as one of your Tuesday posts. But where most people go wrong is they overthink all of this content. You need to plan your content, be consistent, but also you need to be willing to just like post things that are personal outside of the box type stuff that gets engagement because the more engagement that a post has means more people are going to know Mike, the painter, Adam, the painter, et cetera. 
The more people that see my profile and see that I own the business, that's going to draw more brand awareness. So like, for example, like I asked a, a simple question a couple of weeks ago that had, you know, 200 comments. How many unread emails do you have in your inbox? So many conversations happened and people got into my ecosystem, joined my Facebook group, asked for my free lead magnet and PDF because people in their ecosystem started to write, hey, I have 60,000 unread emails. So usually like the simple outside of the box ideas are great content pieces that drive top of the funnel engagement. Mm -hmm. Two posts a day though. I mean, like that's going to be a barrier for like many people. How much time a day do you usually spend on each? I mean, now you probably have a system and you're pretty quick at it, but like how much time do you recommend someone who's just trying to get going at this to actually invest in making this content? Cause that's like the two posts a day. That's a, that's a big nut. Yeah. I, I so I plan out everything now, usually on Friday afternoon or, or Sunday afternoon for the entire week. Um, if you're not able or wanting to or willing to do two posts a day, then then start with one post a day. Of mm -hmm. course, I'm talking about like just generic people that like I have seen get the best results. I tell people all the time to do two posts a day, and I've been telling people to do it now since I've been doing it for four straight years. Less than 1% of the population does it, but that's why I grew <laughs> and they didn't, right? That's just that's just simple math. But if you're not posting at all right now, posting once a day will be a great start or every other day, whatever you're willing to commit to. This is, doesn't even just pertain to social media posting, whatever you're willing to commit to that you're doing right now that you could be doing better on do that and then work it up to a aspect of what might actually make sense. But if you're not posting twice a day, and you aren't posting anything at all right now, don't complain that the leads aren't there. Don't mm -hmm. complain that marketing is too expensive because do a post a day is just one of the strategies that you need to do in order to grow at a massive rate. You need to add five new people a day on Facebook. That could be ideal referral partners and other contractors if you're a painter could be just ideal influential people and referral partners as well. So like insurance agents or realtors, anybody that's going to be also connecting with your ideal client. Or if you're like, Hey, there's this neighborhood of people in this zip code and all these things. And this is the Facebook group they hang out with. I'm going to go add a bunch of those people. You need to be doing that because if you have five Facebook friends right now and you start posting twice a day, nothing's going to change. So you have to add more people into your ecosystem and start providing value to them as well as starting to post new content in order to actually see a difference in lead flow. So would you, you would like right now you're doing Facebook, not, not Instagram, or are you doing both? So I do both. I repurpose a lot of the content from Facebook over to Instagram. Now I'm working like for me specifically in my brand, I'm working with a YouTube coach and an Instagram growth growth mm -hmm. coach because Facebook has been like the driving force behind all of what we've done really in the last four and a half years. And the other stuff is just repurposed content. Um, but I also recommend, it, again, if we're talking about posting twice a day on one, it, it can be really tough to add in four or five different platforms that are all deemed significant right now. So I would recommend starting with Facebook because it's the easiest one to gain traction on. On Facebook, you have those Facebook local groups. So it's, I know a guy, I know a gal, the buy, sell trade groups, all those things. That's where in the very beginning, as I was growing my marketing agency, I was only working with local clients in the very beginning, but I was just figuring out ways to send them business. So then that way they would know, like, and trust me and start to ask me, hey, Adam, you've sent me, you've tagged me in Facebook, like all these things. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. So if uh, obviously the value in terms of building a personal brand is, you know, you've you've brought in millions of dollars of revenue for your businesses through your personal brand without paying for ad spend. So there's kind of the value. And I guess just working backwards to calculate the the hours that it takes to you know, build this up over time and do the posting and do the things that most people are not willing to do that, um, that can be like correlated as like the high value activity, right? Over time. 
Yeah. So the 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 leading indicator is like the daily activity, right? The trailing indicator is the leads and the revenue that are going to come from that. Like people ask me all the time. So like as I'm exiting the agency right now, like as of a couple of weeks ago, we were getting like 10 to 15 leads a day coming in from social media to my personal accounts of people wanting digital marketing. And that was people tagging me, people sending referrals and DMs, people just seeing my content about digital marketing and reaching out, et cetera. And everybody said, hey, Adam, like we see you continuing to grow, grow, grow. What are you doing different today that you were when you started this process in August of 2020? Well, I've added some platforms, you know, here and there and reels weren't around, but that's that counts for maybe 10% of overall lead flow. The difference is, is just three and a half years of, of runway mm. and the compounded stuff that more people know who Adam McChesney is and more people know, like, and trust Adam McChesney than ever before. So, so it just continues someone, to grow. If someone takes that, that makes that commitment and posts like one or two times a day and they get really consistent. So number one, they like pick a schedule. They like theme each day, make a couple posts a day around that schedule um, on those themes. How long do you feel like they need to do that until they start seeing some traction? So like for painters, honestly, pretty quickly, to be honest, it, with, with digital marketing, it's a lot tougher because there's hundreds of thousands of options. So I signed my first deal that came from personal branding at not, like literally at the 90 day mark. So I tell everybody do this for 90 days and ultimately like your business will grow. I have coached a community of contractors. Guy just like got one of the largest contracts he's ever sent out. Now it's not a closed lead yet, but he's been posting on, on social media for the last two weeks. And he, but he has never posted before. And he also just went full time with his company because he was a firefighter and he went full time with his company six months ago, but he never made a post to let people know that he went full time with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I was like, these, post number, these post posts aren't necessary, aren't like call to action posts. They're not high. No. We're a painting company. We're like, but it's like providing value. Yeah. So like post number one is, Hey, I know I haven't posted it in a while. Here's what we do. Here's the top projects we work on. Here's, you know, some of our recent work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then like, you know, on Thursday, you do tip Thursday. Hey, when you're getting yeah. ready for your next painting project, here are some things you need to take into consideration. So you're almost doing, and, and like, I'm a huge fan of Alex Hermosi, but I like don't always agree with everything that he talks about, especially for contractors, um, because it, it's hard to basically compare apples to apples on what makes sense. But you should be providing so much free game and value with like your reels and videos, as well as your content that people realize crap in order to get a really, really nice painted project done. I'm going to have to do a lot of things, right? If I'm trying to DIY this myself, I'm just going to go pay the expert. Well, I'm going to pay the expert that made the video or wrote the post and has plenty of projects that hey, they have already worked on where I can see their book of business. And I also know that they know they're, they're what they're talking about, right? That's what you want to be doing. Leading with value, almost giving it away for free in terms of the content of what they need to be thinking about and doing and like different types of posts not just like a before and after every day like that correct yeah cold, right Dif different types of posts like before and after should be once a week like mm -hmm. once a week that's that's what it should be little tiny posts like most of my stuff is if you like write a post on facebook and then all of a sudden it's uh the the small background pops up where you can just write that like those posts get people's attention right? Because there is the background on the post. So even if it's just like one or two line stuff, like, again, all we're looking for is attention. All we're looking for is an engagement because once the engagement starts, new people come into the ecosystem and find out about what it is that you do as the individual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Now, so we're looking at Facebook. We're doing a bunch of posts a day or a couple posts a day, a bunch of posts a week. Um, what next? Like, how do you kind of take your your personal brand to the to the next level beyond that, beyond just getting yeah. consistent and doing that on a daily basis? So it depends ultimately on what the goal is for you as the entrepreneur and for you as the company. So and what I mean by that is I have a lot of people that are contractors that are like, Adam, I want to go speak at industry events. 
I want to start my own podcast. I want to throw my own event here in St. Louis or whatever area they're in. Well, when you build that personal brand and you build that authority, you build that referral network, all of those things, you now have the ability to have the authority worth somebody inviting you to an industry event to speak on their stage, somebody that's willing to have you on their podcast, or you just having the confidence to be able to go do that. Where most people come with that is they don't want to be known as just their painting company and they have ambitions for things outside of their painting company. So I want to go start another business once the painting company gets off the ground. Like this is just the vehicle that I'm using right now. Well, when you go start that new business and you go launch that new business, whether it's a couple of years or 10 years down the line, if you have that personal brand, you're going to be able to get a much quicker start when that happens because the personal brand is there. Mm -hmm. Versus if you just, nobody knows who you are, but you're just the painting company and then you got to decide to go start X, Y, and Z. So I think it ultimately depends on that. But the more people know you, the more platforms that you are on. So we talk about, you know, integrating Instagram, repurposing some of that content over there. If you want in the like commercial work, LinkedIn, incredible freaking place to start investing some time, energy, and content on there. YouTube and TikTok, both of those platforms aren't necessarily going to make you a bunch of money in the facet of local work. But if you want to start gaining authority and gain engagement and gain followers, I know a lot of contractors that make a pretty decent amount of money from advertising and things like that on those platforms. So again, it ultimately depends on like what your role, what your goal is. I know a lot of people that don't do anything other than Facebook though, too. Mm -hmm. They're good with having like a couple of employees mm -hmm. and doing whatever revenue that they're doing a year, but they just want to make sure that the lead flow is consistent. So all ends of the spectrum. So you've worked, you've worked with a few contractors now. I knew you're doing this, some coaching of how people can build their personal brands now. And you've worked with some contractors. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm working with, I have an end of the spectrum of I'm working literally with a brand new deck building company that's here in St. Louis all the way up to I'm working with a uh, $16 million a year roofing company that wants to go to 23 million here this year. And I'm training their sales reps on how to build personal brands. Okay. Because their digital marketing is already like all stacked out and they've tapped out all resources to really grow their business, but their sales reps have never posted a day in the life at all. Yeah. So what how what's like a, a result that you've seen working with one of your clients in terms of the the social brand and the, the business implication thereafter? So the biggest thing has been uh, the referral partners. So like the one Z two Zs, like I've had a, a client this week that closed a thirty thousand dollar kitchen remodel project, biggest project that he's closed from Facebook specifically. Like he hasn't posted a ton. Um, he's probably one of like the funnier ones that he'll post like once and then he won't post at all. But like when he does post, it brings engagement. I'm like continue to go start and do it, but. And it's great when you get those one off large projects, for example, right? Mm -hmm. But it's better when you go and you get you find that that realtor, right? That if you get connected with her, you then get access to five to 10 new leads a month or that insurance agent or that contractor that does a bunch of flooring projects, but they don't do painting. So I would say like the biggest thing is more so like the referral partnerships that have been created through those strategies in just helping those businesses now have access to new lead flows that they would have never gotten unless they actually started posting on social media. Gotcha. So with um, your uh, brand, sorry, uh, authority builders, what, what can someone expect if they were to work with you? Like, how do you help someone like to give them ideas of what to post or like, what is the, what is kind of the, the out, the outcome? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have our group mastermind and then we have one-to-one -one coaching. So our group mastermind, everybody gets a 30-minute onboarding call with myself and my executive assistant. Basically, we are going through a baseline of where you're at right now from a content posting standpoint. So you'll tell us, hey, here's the platforms I'm using or not. Here's how often I'm posting. And then here's how many reels I'm doing. And here's what my goals for this business are. And usually there's a freaking wide gap 
between where people want to be this year and what they're posting on social media. Their lead flow is coming from a variety of other different places. They're paying a bunch for leads. They're doing outdated stuff like you freaking name it. And then we give them a content calendar. And so we say, hey, here's what the content calendar should be looking like Monday through Sunday. And if you're not posting at all, I just want you to commit for the next two weeks to do once a week. We just got to build the habit. We got to build the routine. Here is what you should be posting based on your industry, based on what we believe is going to get the most traction. Oh, and here's a entire 36 page database of stuff we've already posted on multiple different platforms that has gotten a lot of attention that has nothing to do with our business that you can go use as a blueprint, rip off, reword it, whatever. From there, we give everybody a Google Drive that has shared access to the content calendar so we can provide feedback. And of course, we're friends with everybody that's on there so we can kind of see it in real time to where we're able to then help them and say, hey, this post was good. I see it got a lot of engagement, but you could have been doing this better. And then we have three calls every single week in our group mastermind. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, all at two o'clock central time. And so Monday and Friday are more office hour style types of calls where you can bring your questions, ask me those questions, workshop them with the rest of the group. And then Wednesday is a specific training, right? So a specific training on a specific aspect of personal branding and social media content. And then mm -hmm. you get access to a private Facebook group. And then on the one-to-one -one side, you get two extra 30-minute calls with me every single month. So if you're like, Adam, I don't just need the group accountability. Like, I need you in my corner to literally tell me, make sure I post all of those things. Those are our two different options. It's like a personal trainer for brand building. <laughs> yes, that is a perfect example or a perfect way to explain that. Yeah, like I've... So I think I've told the story on the podcast before, but like back, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, I, I was, I still am, but I was really into fitness and I just, I knew my nutrition was off. And so I decided to hire a nutritionist. And at the time it was like, it was expensive for me. It was like 250 a month or something. And I was like, this is really big to spend on someone to tell me what to eat. Right. It doesn't mm -hmm. even include groceries. So, but yeah. I like, I did it. So I did it for three months and like in those three months, I got like more jacked and more shredded and more lean than I'd ever been in my life. And then I was like, you know what? I got the spreadsheets. I know how to do it. So I got rid of my coach, kept the spreadsheets, and bet you can guess what happened next. Yeah, the fall off. I stopped doing it because <laughs> yeah. I didn't have the accountability. I didn't have the guy texting me twice a week and asking me or like looking at my spreadsheet and be like, hey, Mike, you said you had two, you had two, two beers after dinner yesterday. Why'd you do that? Like, mm -hmm. and like I didn't have that accountability. So I just kind of went back to what was comfortable. So having that accountability yeah. can be hugely valuable, especially if that's like a, a big goal of, of yours this year is to like build a personal brand. Absolutely. I mean, in, information is free, like with all the stuff that's out there, whether it's YouTube, whether it's social media, all that stuff, it's implementation and accountability. That's the fee. Everybody says they can do it on their own. They can reinvent it. All the, of course you can, mm -hmm. but where most people lack is the discipline and the motivation to continue doing it time and time again and being consistent with it over and over. Yeah, as Hormozy says, uh, give away the information, sell the implementation. Yes, absolutely. Right? I'm sure if you listen to every episode of this podcast and you watch every one of my YouTube videos in full and like everything that I've ever posted, you could probably get most of what we teach in the program for free. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Or like yeah. big chunks of it, but like it's uh, it's that implementation, the accountability, the nuance, the support, and the feedback that you can't get on YouTube. But it's also the condensed time too, right? So I joined my first mastermind three weeks after going full time in entrepreneurship. Some people ask me like, "Hey, Adam, how did you grow like a seven figure business in fifteen months?" Well, I knew that I would rather pay for the information, for the connections, for not having to go step in the potholes and twist my ankle and, and take all the wrong turns, right? When people join your group, you are giving them the information in a condensed period and bite-sized chunks that they can do. And so that way they don't have to watch every single YouTube video and take all the notes and then figure all the stuff out. It's going to take them a lot longer and they could have just done it much quicker. Yeah, you're buying that speed. Um, I mean, I'm personally very impatient. So if I can pay to jump the queue, 
-hmm. You know, like I'm one of those guys, like if I can pay to get the fast pass at Disney, I don't want to stand in line. You know, I'm going to get to the ride faster. That's like a metaphor for my life, you know, pay to get to the front of the like board the plane faster, all those things. I don't want to wait in line. I don't want to wait for business to happen to me. I want to, you know, I want to I want to control my destiny and get there faster. So I'm I'm a huge proponent of paying for a paying for result um, okay. and getting there faster. Yeah. So if someone wants to get a hold of you, like, how do they do that? Yeah, so the best way to get a hold of me is going to be on Instagram. That's Adam L. McChesney, uh, just because I'm tapped out on friends on Facebook. But you can also search me on Facebook uh, as well, Adam McChesney. You can join our free Facebook group, which is Builders of Authority. Just type that into Facebook. Um, and then you can go to buildauthority.co. You have all of our different options that we have in our Builders of Authority program. Um, and you'll see all my social links and all that good stuff there as well. Cool, man. Uh, any, uh, any last words for the audience, any words of inspiration or anything you want to leave, leave the crew with? Yeah. Don't give up as you start posting on social media. My, my goal for this is to that you heard one thing that you can go start implementing, doing it differently, doing, doing more than what you're doing right now, but don't give up. As with anything, I always tell people, give it 90 days before making some brash judgment on if it's going to work or not. You might post for 90 days twice a day and it not work. People have like came back and told me that, although I don't believe everybody that says, oh yeah, I did it for 90 days because I, why didn't you post last week? But all those things to be said is don't give up too early in the process. And if you truly, truly do want growth in whatever fashion that might be, Posting on social media, creating a personal brand is one of the easiest long-term solutions to be able to do that. It's not always short-term. It's not overnight. I always say authority isn't built overnight. It's built over time. I like that. That's a good, that's a good little quip to, to end on today. Sweet. Well, that is uh, that Adam, Adam McChesney, Builders of Authority. So, man, great to meet you. It was, uh, great to thanks for reaching well. out and glad we could get you on here. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for listening to the Painter Growth Podcast. If you want to grow your painting business, go to www.paintergrowth.com or click on the top link in the description. Talk soon.